There are many standout moments in Demon Slayer, from when Tanjiro uses water breathing to kill the demon in the final selection, to the brilliant animation of fire breathing. However, what we're going to talk about today is when Tanjiro completed his training and cut this boulder. In this video, I'm going to use my own breathing style, math breathing, to calculate how fast Tanjiro needed to swing his sword and with how much force he would need to strike with in order to slice his rock in half. So, take a deep breath because we are about to plunge deep into the world of Demon Slayer. <laughs> Hello internet, Jojo here, and welcome to Idea Shock. Now, unlike the rest of the world, I did not watch Demon Slayer until several months after the first season had already ended. This was for multiple reasons, but the main reason was mostly because I have a little something that prevents me from jumping on the bandwagons. I believe it's called having good taste. That said, once I did start watching Demon Slayer, I kind of binged the entire thing. On first watch, I thought eh, it was okay. It has easily the best animation that I've ever seen but was just okay overall. Then I got to rewatch it, and I just gotta say, Demon Slayer is really good. It's basically what you would get if Fullmetal Alchemist's Brotherhood was in Japan with swords and had breathing magic instead of alchemy. I mean, after all, you got two siblings on a journey to find a way to restore the younger sibling's body to what it was before a certain event, there are super powerful villains that have super fast healing, and you have the main character joining a unique order of warriors that is revered by those who know about it. It's Fullmetal Alchemist's Brotherhood with swords. Anyways, like I said at the start, what we're going to talk about today is the fantastic moment when Tanjiro sliced this boulder in half. When Tanjiro was training in the mountains, he was tasked with training until he was strong enough to cut this large rock. This was a test to prove to his teacher that Tanjiro was ready to take the final selection. Only if Tanjiro could cut the rock would he be allowed to participate in the test. Though, even his teacher didn't think he could do it. But, after many months of training and intervention from some ghosts, Tanjiro proved that he was qualified to be a demon slayer by slicing the boulder in half all the way down the middle. Now, to start this calculation off, we must first compare this rock to Tanjiro. Tanjiro stands about 165 centimeters, or about 5 foot 5 inches tall. Comparing him to the stone in this panel, and we find that it has a diameter of 224.34 centimeters. Taking this diameter and finding the radius, we can find a cross-sectional area of 3.95 square meters. Because Tanjiro is training in the mountains, this rock is very likely to be made of a stone like granite, as granite is very abundant in mountains and the area surrounding the mountains. Granite has an ultimate shear strength of 50 megapascals, so applying this shear strength to the cut, and we find that Tanjiro must have had produced about 197,639,300 newtons of force in order to break this rock like this. This means that he had to deal the equivalent of exactly 22,215 tons of force. But not only this, but Tanjiro put all this force behind the edge of a katana. Most blades tend to have an edge thickness of about 0.012 inches, and katanas are typically 60.6 centimeters or 23.5 inches long. So this means this 22,215 tons of force was applied over 0.282 square inches, yielding a generated pressure of 78,776 tons of force per square inch. If we now apply the distance of the sword pass to the rock and use it as displacement, we discover that Tanjiro must have also produced about 443 megajoules of energy as well. This energy is about 40 times the energy you would get from a 60 ton armored tank hitting someone at top speed. That's quite a bit of power and force. Not to mention, but I'm gonna mention it anyway, because energy is equal to mass and the object's speed, Tanjiro must have been moving very fast. Assuming his katana weighs about 1,400 grams, which is average for a katana, we find that he must have been swinging at a velocity of 56,298 miles per hour, or just over Mach 63. The North American X-15, the fastest jet in the world, maxes out at Mach 6.7. This means that Tanjiro is over 10 times faster than the fastest jet in the world. I gotta say, this is not bad for a sword-wielding wandering hobo. And, well, that's kind of it for this video. If you have any feats that you want to see calculated, I'm starting to make a list, then go ahead and leave a comment and let me know. Not gonna lie, 
Making longer videos takes up a massive amount of time and keeps me from branching out to do other series. So, with that said guys, thanks for watching, see you next time, remember to stay spectacular, Jojo, 